All right, today we're going to take another look at finding the values of x and y from our geometry textbook, McDougall Littell's Geometry, 2007. Now, in this problem, what I want to take a look at first is this triangle up here, this guy right here. In this triangle, I know that one of the angles is 90 degrees. And I can tell that because of this box right here in the corner. That little box means 90 degrees. Now, the other two angles, x and 64, their sum must also be 90 degrees because they're the acute angles of a right triangle. So if I know one of the angles is 90, the other two angles must also have a sum of 90. So that means x plus 64, that's going to equal 90. Now when I do my arithmetic, I subtract 64 from both sides, so I'll end up with x being 90 minus 64 gives me 20. 6. So that's my value for x. I end up with x being 26. Now, to figure out what... Now, for the next part, what I want to do is take a look at this symbol right here and this symbol right there. Because in geometry, when we see those symbols, that's going to tell us that this line right here and this line over here, that those two lines are parallel. And if I have two parallel lines, that's going to tell me certain things about the angles. So what I want to do is first pay attention to the angle I current, that I already found, this one right here, 26 degrees. Now where that is, this angle up here is going to be the same amount because where angle X is and this angle up here, those are alternate interior angles. And we know that if we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So that's going to be 26 as well. Now the piece that I'm going to take a look at next to figure out what the y value is, I'm going to kind of look at two, two parts. One, I know that that's 90. So just like on the triangle before, the sum of these two angles must also be 90. Now there's a couple different ways you can analyze this. One of them is by just simply taking the y plus 26 and set that equal to 90. Solving for x, I end up with y being 64. That's one way that you could have solved this problem. Now a totally different way, if you would have seen this, you could have recognized that, hey, two angles in one of my triangles are congruent to two angles in another triangle. Because I found that this angle right here was 26. And because of parallel lines, my alternate interior angles, that's 26. So I've got this angle and this angle in two different triangles congruent. And then I also have over in this other spot, I've got this 90 degree angle and this 90 degree angle. So I could have recognized that two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, which means my third angles must be congruent. So my third angle is, in this case, y and 64. So I could have thought about it that way and determined that y would have had a value of 64 from the third angles theorem. So there's two different approaches for finding the value for y. It just depends if you want to use parallel lines and the corollary to the triangle sum theorem that says that two acute angles in a right triangle must have a sum of 90. Or you could use the third angles theorem where you recognize that two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle. So therefore the third angles, which in this case was the purple ones that we marked, those third angles, they must also be the same. So there's two different ways to find the value for y. 